Listen, it does not need to be a new year, a new you. It just needs to be a new year, a healthier you. Because sure, okay, they trying to take us down at every front. So get some TLC products and up that metabolism and up that energy and up that immune system, okay? That digestive system. Get that all together with these TLC products right here. And don't forget, okay, sign up for ifyoucanmove.com and become a part of the online gym and share the pounds, honey. We're starting a new challenge on January 3rd and I would love to see y'all there. Get the links down below. Hey everybody, what's up? It's your girl Bondi Blue and I am back for another Real Housewives of Salt Lake City review. All right, y'all, let's go ahead and get into my notes. Um, as y'all can see, I'm feeling a little bit better today. I have been having like the worst headache and a whole little situation for the past few days. So I'm finally feeling a little bit better. I'm only doing three videos today. So you will get, um, this video sisters and I've already put out married at first sight. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into the notes for this whole situation. So Heather is having a grand opening this episode for her beauty lab all right y'all know she's been like building and working on this the entire season and now it's finally getting ready to have its grand opening right so like the the end of the episode will basically be everybody meeting up to see the beauty lab and to have their final confrontation for the season. Before we get there, though, they are getting things together and Whitney goes over to talk to Heather. OK, I love the faces that I catch Whitney making sometimes. OK, so she's still inviting Jen and that's why Whitney's making this face. Like Jen just raised her hand and said she didn't trust you after you have been the only person running behind her, wiping up her tears, dealing with her, throwing hands at you, being disrespectful, trying to come for your cousin because Whitney is your cousin. OK, so I just kind of feel like Jen has done a lot for you to revoke your inv your invitation. But for some reason, Heather chooses not to. OK. And nobody understands why, neither Whitney or us, okay? So then we see um, Lisa and Jen. Lisa and Jen meet up, okay? And I think they met up before everybody left Vegas. And, of course, Jen is crying and you know uh lisa said that she saw her and she was distraught and she had on this really great gucci track suit you know but she just looks so sad about everything that's happened so lisa wanted to hear her out so they've met up to talk jen then puts her terrible behavior on her culture there's nothing we love more than for someone to use their culture as a way to excuse their violence and irrehens their violent, childish, and bullshit behavior. I'm exhausted with Jen. And I don't understand how anyone could want to be a friend of hers. She is tiring. She thinks it's all about her. Like, I don't want to call her narcissistic because you know how much everybody hates when you use that word. But I don't understand another word for somebody that makes everything about them and always plays the victim and then gaslights other people. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, you knew what you were doing when you were going around spreading those rumors about Meredith. You knew what you're doing when you spaz out and have a temper tantrum. It's so you can scare everybody into submission because it's always what you do. And then you cry and then you swear up and down that you didn't mean anything by it. And you never have terrible intentions. I never have bad intentions. Bullshit. Bullshit. Okay. I'm over Jen. Lisa says that she just needs to learn not to say everything that she thinks. And I'm like, you would think you wouldn't have to say shit like that to a woman her age. Like, yes, that, that's something we all have to learn. But ultimately, I feel like I am so sick and tired of people making excuses for the way that Jen acts. She is a grown ass woman and she acts like a toddler who can't control her anger when she can't get her way. And I'm just over it. I really, really am. And I'm over everybody like wanting to be her friend regardless of how much she disrespects them. Um, so then we see 
Seth and Meredith, okay? And they are really in a good place. And I'm happy for them because I know it's like a long time coming. And it's just, it, it's really nice to see married couples go through the ups and downs and then come back to the ups. Like, it, it's really nice to see. They discuss Jen and her volatility. Seth can't believe that they are actually engaging in conversations about Meredith and Seth's relationship. Like, why are you worrying about our marriage? Why are you going around talking shit about our marriage? Seth does feel like maybe, you know, she should just say, hey, at one point our marriage was in the shitter. Like, it happens. But it still should not be a topic of conversation when she isn't around, especially when you're supposed to be her close friend and you're telling everybody that she had another man on the side as if that would not hinder her her trying to make things work out with her husband. You're not in her relationship. Going around telling everybody that was really um, mean. And in all honesty, it, it was venomous to me because I feel like she meant to do it. She was pissed off that Meredith was not going to be punked, that Meredith was not going to stop being friends with Mary. And so she decided to then go around spreading rumors. And it was passive aggressive, but it was extra aggressive because every... Every episode, we saw her tell somebody that Meredith is probably like sleeping around on Seth because if she isn't getting it at home, then where is she getting it? Like you were real, real slick about that shit. And as far as I'm concerned, I think Jen is a shit person and everybody can try to act like she's not. But to me, she is. OK, and Meredith says, you know, they need to worry about their own relationships. And it's probably because they have issues in their own marriages that they are so worried about mine. And she's saying they and all of that, but she really means Jen's ass. Like, your husband isn't home, and that's why you worrying about what's going on in my marriage. Okay? Listen. Moving along, child. So, a really good moment um, was Whitney being a model for her dad this episode. He auditioned to be, um, you know, like a, a hair instructor at, a, like, a hair school. And I did not know how this was going to go at first because I am not a fan of his hair, but I appreciated his technique, his personality, the way he engaged with the students. I really, really liked this scene. And I thought it was great for Whitney and for her dad. I hope that he continues to do well because it's a testament that you really shouldn't give up on your family all the time. Like, yes, people have issues and that is not always your responsibility or your problem. And at some point when it becomes uh, too much for you to bear you have got to let people figure their own shit out for sure but her deciding to stick by her dad's side to see him come to this point I thought it was really amazing and I hope he got the job because he seemed like he did really well and it seems like a space that would help him transition into getting back into hair and doing his own thing again but this is really amazing and I just I really enjoyed it however I was annoyed that it was a cut with no style but everybody's proud of Whitney's dad for sure Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and move on. Hold up, let me get the next one. So Heather and Meredith talk about the Jen situation. And Heather realizes that she would never advise her daughters to take shit like this from a friend, a boyfriend, or anyone. And when she realized that, it really made her even more upset with Jen than she already was. And Meredith is on this same page where it's like, I do not have to deal with this bullshit from anybody, especially not from a friend. You know what I'm saying? So um, it just reminds Heather that it's much like what she did in her marriage. And she doesn't want to do that. She just doesn't want to lie down and take it. And that's what Jen wants her to do. And I'm so glad that she's getting angry about the situation. Because otherwise, I feel like she would allow that girl to keep stepping on her like she ain't shit. And I just think Heather has had enough of that in her life. Like there's no reason for a grown woman who has accomplished what you have with the amount of children you have, you know, like you are a woman that has had a full life, regardless to whether, you know, you realize that or not, you have a million dollar business. You have several beautiful children. You have a rich ex-husband. You have a full life to live in front of you as well as the life that you've already led. So I kind of feel like when you are in that place in your life, you have no space or time for people. People who are not about positivity in your life like there's no point in having people in your circle or even around you that are going to bring negativity or going to require so much of a friendship like there's no reason for any of that as far as I'm concerned okay so good for Heather for coming to this conclusion child it took her long enough so Lisa y'all 
Lisa is always trying to act like she's spending time with her kids, but really she's just doing what she wants to do. And this is what I want parents to understand. You are not really spending time with your kids if you're not doing something that your kids like to do some of the time. And I feel like, bitch, take them kids to Chuck E. Cheese, take them to the mall, take them to a movie, take them on a vacation. I don't know, but take them somewhere where you're not forcing them to talk about what you want them to sell on this television show. Like, I get it. But to really have your son sitting here reading descriptions and shit, and the little one is in the background running, a, running around like, I am so not here for this bullshit, mom. I want to go run and play. I don't want to be in a in a conference room talking about hair products. Like, what what is he, like 10 like the, the the little boy wants to go and play. You know what I'm saying, y'all? Like I just, I, I really am annoyed with Lisa and how I feel like everything with her kids is always, it's always about business. Like be a mother. Nobody's asking you to make a hot dog, bitch, but be a mother. You know what I'm saying? Not a business partner. And another thing, hot dogs are not that hard to make. You boil water, you toast bread. It's really simple. Never mind. Moving along, you guys. So then we see Mary. Mary takes her crazy ass to her church to pick on her choir and look like, you know, death, basically. Like she looked like she just came from out the cemetery so she can, you know, uh, uh, orchestrate the choir and everything. But she she picks on them people. OK, this is called who you follow. OK, you can see me. You see me. I mean, I'm in front of you. OK, so I'm who you follow. OK, I was just like, oh, my God, why are you talking to all these grown ass people, some of which who are older than you? Like, you know, you're their mother or some shit like that. Like she just does the most. OK, if you have issues, tell me, bitch, you have issues. You need to talk to someone. OK, like you can tell that there's a cult like energy because of the way they allow her to talk to them. I'm just saying there wasn't one eye rolled and I'd have been rolling my eyes and everything. Like, I don't know who you think you're talking to, little girl, <laughs> but I didn't become an old ass woman. So I can have some crazy bitch talking to me crazy because her mama, you know, her grandmother didn't die and let her take over the church now child. Anyway, so then the next thing we see is Sharif making an effort with Jen. Sharif takes uh, Jen and her little cute uh, outfit salsa dancing. And y'all, Sharif is quick on his feet. I like the move. Listen, I was here for it. Sharif knew he could dance. She said he used to be in a dance group back in the day. Okay. To me, her ass is stiff, but whatever. Okay. They dance, they have a good time. And then after they sit down to talk, and basically, he says that this is him trying to make things better between the two of them. I think it's him trying to make sure that she doesn't go any crazier and that she does not leave with half of his ends. I think that a lot of Sharif's life is so much better if Jen thinks that everything is good and copacetic. Um, by the time we get to the end of the episode, we realize that their lives are not going to change that much. She's still going to be seeing her husband most of the time on FaceTime and not in person. And I don't think it's all work. And I still don't think it's all work. I think Sharif has another woman somewhere that gives him peace so that he can have the energy to go and deal with Jen for however many days out of the year that he actually goes to deal with her. But this is one of the days where she's getting all of what she needs from Sharif, which is an activity she likes to do, like dance and all of his attention. And then him telling her that she's not a bad person and she just needs to take responsibility for her actions with the ladies. And she says she knows there are things that she needs to change. Well, why don't you act like it, bitch? When people ask you to apologize, when people need you to take accountability, why are you sitting up there talking about, well, what am I apologizing for? Bitch, everything that you've done, do we need to run it back? We gonna run it back at the reunion and then you can see all of the things that you need to apologize for, Jen. We'll wait till we get there because you acting like you stupid right now. Okay, so then we get to the Beauty Lab grant opening and... Um, your boy Billy is there. Okay. Child Billy know he is hard on the eyes. I don't know what he's been through in his life, but sometimes money does not make your skin look better. Um, either way, he needs to come to the beauty lab and let Heather do something on him because that skin is rough. And I just don't, I don't think it makes sense for a man with so much money, like moisturize for God's sakes. Um, but anyway, it kind of looks like somebody after a lot of years of hard drug use, but he's a Mormon and they'll swell up and down. They've never done anything, but Anyway, 
So he has to come and give his stamp approval, his stamp of approval to her business. If not, it probably won't do as well. That's what she said. I don't think that's true. Um, your business is already doing well. Like, why does it really matter? You know, everybody who's coming is still coming just because you have a new building. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you still had this multi-million dollar company before he showed up today to give his stamp of approval. Anyway, y'all. So the girls arrive. Um, Mary looks a mess. Let me see if I can find a picture of Mary so that y'all can see how much of a mess she looks. Um, they also had like oxygen there, which I thought was really cool, like flavored oxygen. I really want to try that, especially if it's not harmful to my body in any way. Um, because sometimes I find that cute little things that taste like cotton candy usually aren't good for my body. What in the man in the mirror is going on here, you guys? I want y'all to name as many things as y'all can think of that she looks like. Saw, a ghost, a white lady, somebody that's not going to make it, somebody that's casket sharp, somebody that's not alive. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not at my best, but oh my God. Like, what color skin is that? Eggshell? There's a tint of yellow in there somewhere. But she looks a hot ass mess and she really should stop bleaching. She really need to let some of her melanin come back. Um, I think that's why she's crazy, to be honest. I think you can't get rid of melanin and think you're going to be healthy after. Like I just like she looks a mess and she should be ashamed of herself. Um, let's talk about the conversation between Lisa and Meredith. So Lisa has decided that she's going to forgive Jen. And I guess she told Meredith, thinking that Meredith was going to jump on board. But Meredith is like, you can do what you want to do. But I'm not about to be friends with that bitch after she talked about my marriage. I have to protect my peace. And if that means that you can be friends with her and I don't have to be around her, then that's exactly what that means. I love Meredith. I love Meredith. She's like, I'm not going to choose, you know, I'm not going to choose to hang around her, but I'm not going to make you choose to be friends with one or, you know, the other of us. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to make you choose between me and her the way she would make you choose between me and her. But I'm just going to say that I ain't got time for the beach. Okay. Everybody was so confused by Meredith's diamond mask. I don't know why. Like, I feel like I've seen mask like that before you know what i'm saying like i've seen people wear diamond masks before and i thought she looked great a lot of other people were like so confused by it and i was just like well i'm not <laughs> so as they were having that conversation about jen jen comes in okay jen comes in looking fabulous as usual her fur is so beautiful on the front i don't like the back it's a gucci fur shawl and there's like um, like the Gucci print, but in a lighter color of fur, which looks amazing on the front half, but on the back half, eh, like, yeah, I'm sorry, but a lot of like the emblems to me look tacky and, and it doesn't matter how expensive it is. It looks tacky to me. Okay. So I like the front, don't like the back, but I do think it's beautiful. And I think she looked beautiful, but she always looks amazing. Like, especially at events like this, she always comes in and, and shows out as far as I'm concerned. But that does not make up for her nasty energy, okay? So the first person she talks to is Whitney. And Whitney tells her that she can't have any toxic friendships, okay? I can't be around somebody that's coming at me all aggressive and shit. And Jen says that she's gonna Michelle Obama this situation. And I'm like, bitch, you wish, okay? You wish. First of all, the fact that you actually have wronged every single person that is on this cast which means you are not Michelle Obama-ing anything, okay? Michelle Obama would never act like you. She would not have temper tantrums. She would not act like a child. She would act like a grown-ass woman. So you don't get to wrong people and then think you're taking the high road by saying you're sorry for it, okay? Like, girl, I was so aggravated when she said that shit, and I honestly don't like the way she handled Whitney as if Whitney didn't deserve an apology. She did deserve an apology because you put your fingers in her face and you got all in her personal space over some bullshit. At the end of the day, she did not lie. Mary might have lied, but they are scared of you because you act like an asshole when you don't get your way. Period. Like, that's what it is. I don't know what, what you think happened, but that's what happened. Okay. 
Child, she does she does not live in reality with everybody else on the show. She just doesn't. Then she goes over to Meredith. Let me pull up the picture of Meredith, okay? Because Meredith was trained to go and had the look on her face like you could come over here, soft voice, and apologize and all the fuck you want. But what she's not going to do is manipulate me into changing my mind about the way I feel about you right now. It's all good that you want to come over here and apologize because she did. I'm so sorry for my actions and everything. All of that bullshit. All of that's great. But I need to see the shit. I need you to show and prove. And I appreciate that about Meredith because what she's saying is you can say as many nice sweet words as you want to. But the next time you scream at me or raise up on me behind some bullshit it'll be the last time you ever have a conversation with me in your life okay she's not running to forgive her but she's hearing her out and then Jen says that you know I don't understand why she's not accepting my apology right away as I'm giving it but you know I'm just gonna be here for Meredith whenever she's ready and I'm like that's that's the only thing you can do because Meredith ain't gonna let you do a, a goddamn other thing okay you can't do shit else for her but wait okay child meredith definitely came out to be the fan favorite as far as i'm concerned and then here's your second fan favorite heather who said bitch i've had enough okay heather said i invited her ass so that i could tell her off that's basically what happened here okay so heather and jen talk and heather goes in okay goes in on her I'm pathetic and I'm a fool, okay, because I'm always running behind you. I do everything to keep this friendship between me and you going and you shit on me, okay? That's what she basically said. And I was so here for her being honest and going at her and wanting accountability. And the thing that aggravated me about Jen is that she knows exactly what she did to Heather, but now she's going to stand up here and act like she doesn't know what she's done. I don't know what I'm owning. I don't know what I'm apologizing for then what you crying for bitch what you crying for bitch you going around the room apologizing to everybody but you get to heather and now you don't know what you apologizing for you could pilot you can apologize for hitting her you can apologize for screaming at her you can apologize for jumping in her face you can apologize for saying you didn't trust her all because you're upset because she was real enough to tell you that you were wrong for the way that you was handling whitney like what you just don't like when people are honest with you. You just don't like when people tell you the truth. You don't like that. You want people to coax your ego. You want people to tell you that you did nothing wrong. You want people to make you feel good when the truth of the matter is you make everybody else feel like shit. And to me, I wouldn't be kissing your ass. I would not. So I'm glad that Heather has finally had enough. Now, what took too long was this conversation. This conversation took way too long, but Heather was not giving up on wanting the accountability. But I almost feel like the fact that she would not give up on wanting said accountability meant that she in some way was not giving up on the friendship. It was almost like I'm going to um, argue with you until you do what I want you to do and then we can be friends again. Like that's what it felt like. That's what it felt like to me. Um, and eventually Jen, you know, says it wasn't her intention to hurt her. And, you know, I'm really going to try. And what do you, what do you want me to do? You want me to, okay, I'm going to do that. It was bullshit to me. It was Jen saying, I don't want to lose my friendship with Heather. So I'm just going to suck it up and say, I'm sorry, bitch. Okay. I'm sorry. And I love you. Okay. I love you too. And then they hug it out. The other girls had left because they was tired of this conversation. Okay. It was nerve wrecking. Lisa's nerves was bad. She had to leave. Um, Meredith and Whitney had had enough of the bullshit and walked off and they were still standing there going back and forth until they finally made up with one another. I will give y'all a wrap up for everybody, but what difference does it make? Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed amongst any of the women um, for the wrap up. And I'm sure anything else that we need to know, we will find out on the reunion. OK, I'm looking forward to the reunion because I hope there's some holding Jen accountable because I feel like it didn't really happen because I don't think any of her apologies were really sincere. I don't. I think Meredith might have gotten the only real apology, but I don't even think her apology to Heather was sincere. It was almost like, all right, bitch, I'm just going to apologize to you so we can stop. Like, it, that's what it seemed like to me. It did not seem sincere at all. And it damn sure didn't seem sincere what she did to Whitney. 
Um, I almost feel like she feels like Whitney is beneath her and she doesn't actually have to respect her. But in order to stay in the good graces of the entire group, it's best to just make it better with everybody. Um, but to me, I'm over Jen. I'm over Jen and I hope they drag her ass further at the reunion for the fake ass apology she was given. Because you talking all of that shit in a confessional, please believe they're going to make you answer for that shit. When we get to the reunion and she'll probably cry and throw some shit and then roll around on the floor like a toddler and have a temper tantrum. And I hope people just walk over her. I hope they do just walk right over her and all her bullshit. But anyway, y'all, that's it. That's all I got to say about it. It was a good enough finale episode. I actually enjoyed this season. Y'all know I don't watch you know, any of the Caucasian housewife shows. I just don't. I'm sorry. Like, they're not that interesting to me. Um, but this one actually came through with a little something. All right. I'm here for most of the women on this cast as far as characters. My favorite is Meredith. I really like Whitney. And then, you know, it's Heather, Lisa, and then lastly, Mary and Jen. And I'm going to put Mary in front of Jen just because I feel like even though Mary is problematic, you know, bleaches her skin, probably is some type of cult leader, takes advantage of people, just an all around nasty person. Um, I feel like she at least doesn't have temper tantrums on camera. And to me, that is, you know, worse when it comes to the format of this show. Jen is an energy suck, a soul suck, and I could not be around her. Mary can just go into her house and, you know, hide out amongst her things and she'll be fine. But yeah, we'll, we'll see how the reunion goes and what it gives. Anyway, hope y'all enjoyed. I love y'all. I'm going to go rest and um, hopefully feel much better tomorrow. And we can kick out more of the videos tomorrow that I'm a little behind on. Okay, so I love y'all. Y'all have a good day.